So let's start sending some requests. And for this, I have a little starting project, which of course is linked below the video. This is a simple HTML file, only has two buttons, has a script import pointing at the XHRJS file, where I just have some basic setup for you. Got some other files as well, where we'll work in later. And this is what you essentially see on the screen. If you open that file, you can just double click it in the end. Uh, you don't need a dev server for this. We'll work with this dummy API here, Regress. It's a dummy REST API to which we can send a couple of requests to see whether that works, to also see what happens if we would get back an error. Really useful, so definitely give that a try. And with that, let's dive right in. And I want to start with XHRJS, where I want to start with the XML HTTP request object, because we essentially got three main options when it comes to sending HTTP requests with vanilla JavaScript. That's the XML HTTP request object. That's the fetch API. Both of these are built into JavaScript. And it's the Axios package, a third party library you can integrate into any JavaScript object, which builds up on XML HTTP request. So basically it will wrap this and make it more convenient to use it. But to understand what it wraps, let's start with that on our own. And for that here, I got two functions prepared in the XHRJS file which are triggered when we click the get and the post button respectively. And let's start with the get button. Then I wanna send a get request. And let's say we wanna simply fetch a list of users. So we wanna set a get request to this endpoint here in the end. Now for that, we need to create a new XHR object by instantiating XML HTTP request. And that's a global constructor function, so to say built into the browser exposed in JavaScript. So that is available without adding any special package or library or anything like that. Now with this setup, we can use that to send a request and we do that by calling open, or at least we start doing that by calling open. Open sounds like it opens a connection. It actually does not do that, but it prepares a HTTP request to be sent. And for that, open takes two arguments the first one is the HTTP method you want to use. And there I want to use get to send a get request here. And the second is the URL to which you want to send that request. So here I want to send a get request to, and now the URL is request.in slash API slash users. And then we can add such a query parameter to fake pagination. Now important, we're talking to a fake API here. We're not getting back real data and we'll not be able to store data there. It's just so that we can test sending requests. So here we wanna send it to slash API slash users as we see it here essentially. And we can already see what we'll get back if we type requests.in slash API slash users. This is what we should get back. We don't need to use pagination. We can just send it like this if we want to. And then this, if we open it in a tab like this, we'll send a get request. So this is what we should get back when we send a get request from inside JavaScript. So we send a request to this URL, a get request, or we plan on doing that. The next step is to actually send it. And we do that by calling xhr.send. This now really sends the pre-configured request and that should theoretically be all we need to do. Now, if we save all of that and we reload our page here, we can go to the network tab in the browser developer tools to see any HTTP requests which are sent. And here we see the requests to the initial files we're working with. If we now click on get data, we see one additional request to this URL with a get method. Here we see which headers were attached by the browser. And if we click on preview, we see the response. And that's looking quite good. We see that data, which we also saw in the browser tab. So that works, but of course, we're not there yet. Sending a request like that is nice, but we're not really using the response here. Now to use the response, we have to set up a listener on the XHR object to the onload event. And we do this by assigning a function to the onload property. Now, theoretically, you can also use add event listener and listen to the load event, but not all browsers support this. So I'll use this approach, which has broader browser support. By the way, it's up to you whether you use function with the function keyword here or whether you define an arrow function here. 
So now this allows us to create some code or to write some code, which will be fired when we get a response, essentially. That's when onload will trigger. Now you might expect that we get the response here as an argument passed in by XML HTTP request automatically, but that's not the case. Instead, to get the data, we have to access xhr.response in here. Now if we console log that, we'll see what we get as a response. So let's do this here, save that and reload, and then go to the console in the DevTools, click get data, and we see this. Now this might look like JavaScript data, but actually it's one long string because this is JSON data. Data typically is exchanged in JSON format when you're talking to an API, and this dummy API is no exception. And therefore we get back such JSON data, which is a string that holds machine readable data. Now to convert it from JSON to real JavaScript code we can work with, we can use JSON parse a convenience method or a convenience object built into the browser exposed in JavaScript that transforms JSON data to raw JavaScript objects and data types. And we can pass xhr.response to JSON parse here to get that converted data and then lock that converted data here. Now if we do that and we reload and click get data, this now is real JavaScript data with which we can work. So there we could access the data property, go through that array and so on. So with that, we're fetching data. Just one hint, this parsing here is actually a step we can omit. If we go to our XHR object and we set the response type here to JSON, we can do that in advance here. So prior to sending the request and then the response will be parsed from JSON to JavaScript data for us. So then we can just access dot response and will not get the raw JSON data, but the parsed converted JavaScript objects and data. So that's a little thing we can do. And with that, we prepared our XML HTTP request to get data. Now let's also see how we send data. For that, of course, we can duplicate this and basically exchange the, the verb here, the HTTP method and adjust the URL. But of course, code duplication is never a good idea. So what I'll do instead is I'll outsource this into a new function, send HTTP request could be a fitting name, into which I'll then put this code here. So I'll move all of that into this function. And here I want to get the, the method and the URL so that we can use this dynamically in here and just use method and URL here. And then from down there in get data, I can call send HTTP request and pass in get as a method and the URL. Now we're not there yet though. Of course, I don't want to handle my response in this reusable function here. I want to handle it down there in get data. We can take this as an opportunity to also convert this to use promises, which I find to be nicer to work with. It's a nicer syntax, makes working with async code easier. To promiseify this, we can create a new promise object here, like this. And a promise constructor takes a function, which itself takes a resolve and a reject argument, which are functions we can call from inside that function here to mark this promise as resolved or as rejected. And then we can move all that code here into our promise configuring function here, so to say. And now in on load, I'll cut this code and instead call resolve XHR response, which means we mark this promise as resolved and pass this data along with this resolve event so that we can use it when we use the then method on our promise. And therefore now in get data, we can add then thereafter, we'll get our response data here and we can then use that here in this then block. Of course, you could also use async await in this function here if you prefer that. So now we outsource this and we promiseified that. Just one thing, we have to return that promise here in send HTTP request so that send HTTP request does give us a promise on which we can call then. And with that, let's just quickly check whether that still works. If we call get data, yep, that's looking good. And now we can reuse that and send data as well. There we can call send HTTP request. 
we want to send a post request here because I want to send a post request to register successful to fake the registration of a user. So we have to send a post request to request.in slash API slash register. And now we also need to attach some data. We need to attach an object or JSON data to be precise, where we have an email key and a password key and then, well, email address and some fictional password. So for that, I'll pass in a third argument here. Whoops, not here. That's the wrong place. Didn't want to change it there. Down there, of course, here I want to have a post request, have my URL, which should be slash register at the end, and then also pass in some data. And that can be a JavaScript object here where we have an email key with maybe test at test.com and also where we have a password key where we could have tester. So now that's JavaScript data. We need to accept that data in send HTTP request and we then need to transform it to JSON data there. So in send HTTP request, I wanna accept the third argument, data, which I don't pass for a get request, but that's okay. It's just undefined in that case. But here, if I do have it, I want to append it. And we do that in the send method. There we can pass in data, though we should pass in JSON data here, which we can generate with that JSON object and then the stringify method. This converts a JavaScript object, JavaScript data to JSON data. And now this is added to the outgoing request and therefore sending that data should work as well. Now let's check the response data here and console log response data and see whether that worked. If we save all of that and we go back to our little application here and reload and click on post data, I get an error, missing email or username. Now let's inspect the request. If we have a look at the headers, we see email and password actually was attached here. So attaching that data to the request worked. It is a post request to slash register. So what could be the issue here? Well, we need to add some extra headers. The API basically fails to parse the incoming request because we're not telling it that we're sending JSON data. So to set an extra header, we go to send HTTP request. And there, before we send the request, we can add a header by accessing the XHR object and then calling set request header. And here I want to set the content dash type header to application slash JSON which signals that we're appending JSON data. I only wanna do that though, if we have data. So if that data argument here is truthy, then we send this extra header. And with that, if we save that and we go back to our app and reload and click post data, we still fail here. However, in the console, we see we get a different error, only to find users succeed registration. Well, let's try this dummy data therefore, and not our own dummy data. So let's use this email address from the official docs here and this password. And with that, it should now work. If we now save that, reload one more time and click post data, now this works and you see we get this dummy success response. So this works, the trick was to append headers and this is how you do that with XHR request. But we also saw that we can get errors. Now, what can we do if we get such errors? We wanna handle them, right? Now to handle, such errors, we can go to our send HTTP request function and add xhr.onError here as a handler. This triggers this function whenever we get an error from that API basically, so from sending a request. In this case, I want to reject my promise and maybe also pass in some data here like something went wrong, some description string. You could also pass on an error object or whatever you want. Now let's handle that error here for sending a request, for example, by adding a catch block here in our promise chain where we get our error data, which we then can console log. And now hopefully we see our error string here if we produce an error. Now to produce an error, we just have to send invalid data for example, by omitting the password, then we should get back a 400 response. So let's comment out the password here, save all of that and retry. If we reload and click post data, we do get an error, but please note, this here is coming from line 40. We're not getting any log 
from line 20. And now that is really a common mistake and something you easily get wrong. It seems so easy. We listen to errors here. We trigger a function when an error occurred. And yet this function doesn't seem to execute when we have an error. Because we never get output from line 20. Well, that makes sense. We have no console log there. But we also don't get it from line 43. We get it from line 40 instead. So it's actually our success case here, which is getting logged to the console. Well, and that's tricky. On error here, this function will trigger if it technically fails, if the request technically fails, if it fails to be sent, maybe because you have no network connection, anything like that. If the request succeeds and you also get back a response, then the overall request response thing here is treated as successful. We, of course, have an error response, but technically it's a successful response. It technically was delivered to our JavaScript code. The server just added some extra information to the response, the 400 status code, that marks it as an unsuccessful response. But that's just a, a detail, that's just data, that's part of the response. The response itself reached our JavaScript code. It didn't fail, it didn't crash. So technically, we have a successful response, of course, with data attached to it that matters to us and that tells us that it wasn't really successful on the server. Nonetheless, we make it into this function and therefore we simply have to use this function to check if we had a successful response. And we can do this with the help of xhr.status. This gives us the status code of the response once we got it, and we can compare that and check whether we have a successful response or not. And we could say if we have a response code greater or equal than 400, then it is a failed response. So here I then want to reject, but still forward the xhr response body, because that might hold important information. For example, here, the response body actually gives us an error description, which might matter to us. So I do forward the response body, which we do have, because technically we have a correct response, but I do reject the promise, hence will produce an error in the promise chain and will end up in catch. So now with that, only in the else case, which means we have a successful response, I want to resolve the promise, which means we don't produce an error and we don't end up in the catch block. With that out of the way, if we now save that and reload and go to the console and click post data, now we see some output from line 47 here. And if we have a look at our code, we see line 47 indeed is in the catch block. So now we're able to handle this successfully. And this is how we properly handle errors and error status codes with XML HTTP request. And that in general is the XML HTTP request. Quite a nice API, has good browser support, a bit clunky to work with though, with these strange on load and on error listener functions here, also with this strange behavior regarding error status codes. Overall though, of course, that's just something you have to know. And as you see here, you can easily wrap this in a reusable function that even uses promises so that you have a fairly convenient way of utilizing this API. Nonetheless, this is nice, but what if we had an API that would use promises out of the box so that we don't have to create a wrapper like that? Well, that would be the fetch API, which we'll have a look at right now.